Hi, this is Nicole Kupchik and welcome to 10 Minute Tidbits. Today I'm here with Joel Green and we are going to chat about dexmedetomidine, Presidex, a wonderful yes. sedating medication. Well, it's newer to the market. We haven't had a lot of options other than this drug for a long time, so it's, yeah. it was pretty awesome when it came to market. Yeah, it's been on market for uh, 15 plus Somewhere years. 13, 15 years. 15 years um, so, yeah. The original name was Presidex, and now they're slowly coming off of um, their pa FDA patent, so we're getting some generic ones coming out. Yeah, so so it, uh, the mechanism of action is a lot different than a lot of sedatives we use in that it does not suppress your respiratory drive to breathe, which is a really big yeah. deal. So you can use this medication in non-intubated patients, but what I want to talk specifically about is, is delirium, delirium, yeah. and dexmedetomidine. So there was a new study that was published. So in the the notes, so look down in the comments. I'll link uh, to the study. But there was a newer study. And I'm just I've got my notes here. I'm going to kind of uh, read off these notes just a little bit. And you guys know what? I'm sorry. I have to wear glasses just because I do because I'm old. All right, you ready? Happens. Yeah. Okay, it happens. It'll happen to you too. So don't laugh at me. Okay. But um, but there was this really cool study. I presented it at NTI in the critical care studies you should know about uh, presentation I did because I think this was huge. So what it was, was a, um, a randomized trial where 100 patients who were delirium free, so imagine you're in the ICU, you've got, so the way patients were enrolled in this study is if they were delirium free, intubated, non-intubated, uh, but they would get randomized to either receive nocturnal dexmedetomidine, where they run, where they ran dex from like 9.30 at night till 6.15 mm. in the morning, or they were randomized to receive placebo. Okay. And so the question was, does dexmedetomidine prophylactically suppress or prevent delirium? Right. And, and the success is, yes, it does. Yes, which is crazy, yeah. right? So a couple little details about this study. It was two different centers. It was double-blinded placebo-controlled. So, you know, like, again, one group got saline, whereas the other group got... Um, dexmedetomidine and what they did was they titrated the drug either saline or dexmedetomidine to a RAS of minus one. Now the one thing I was kind of cracking up about is how would you titrate saline to right. a RAS of minus one? It's, yeah. That's kind of an interesting thought. 999. Yeah, we're, at, like we're wide open yeah. with this medication, right. right? So so I kind of wonder, I would love to like talk to any yeah. nurses who had patients in the study, like did they know? Right. I bet they knew. Yeah. They had to know, right? Yeah, you yeah. definitely tell the difference between saline and Right? Yeah. I would think. So anyway, so other things they did was if the patient was receiving sedatives, they would have those during the night, so mm -hmm. to cut them in half, and then they would, again, either get dex or right. saline, um, and then they, would, they had dosing guidelines on titrate trading the dexmedetomidine up, and they did this nightly until the patient was discharged from the ICU. And what they found was a statistical significant difference in prevention of delirium. I think this is absolutely huge. So they looked at delirium free days, and the dexmedetomidine group had 80% delirium free days versus placebo 54%. Yeah. This is huge. That's amazing. Now, this as a night shift huge. nurse, I love this study yes. because I get to turn on Presidex every single night for my patients. Right? Like, so as night you shift, get Dex we, and you, you get Dex. Everybody and gets you dex. get It's like yeah. Oprah with her cars, yes. right? As a so, pharmacy okay. friends, they hate this because now they're making all these extra Presidex trips. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I think the other reason pharmacists may not right. be like so excited about this is because of the cost. Yeah. But here's one of the frustrating things, and I know this is working as a clinical nurse specialist for you years is that when you look at like hospital budgets mm -hmm. so pharmacies got their costs right. right and there's different silos of budget and yes for a pharmacy to take this on it's going to cost a yeah. lot of money however you've got to take a step back and look at bigger budget right, right? and think from a hospital and patient perspective, is it actually cheaper to run dexmedetomidine and prevent delirium? Right. The answer, of course it is, right? Yeah, because I mean, if a patient gets delirious, you're gonna increase their length of stay. Oh yeah. And as if every day in the ICU, just to be in the physical yeah. ICU is about $10,000 a day. This is huge. So you're saving a ton of money yeah, if so you prevent delirium. I see, I see length of stay, ventilator days, right. hospital length of stay, and then there's the long-term benefits right. of not getting delirious. Yeah. I mean, this is huge. You know, delirium's not sexy. No. 
It's not no. Sexy. It's not sexy. Yeah. But it matters. It right. absolutely matters yeah. that we prevent delirium in patients. Now, one of the interesting things in the study is they did a survey of the patients and asked them how they felt about right. their sleep quality. Now, the patients reported that they didn't have an improved, like their perception of their sleep mm -hmm. was not different between the groups. But I think, you know, if you were to go to, you know, being in a hospital is going to be much different sleep right. quality yeah. than being at home. And so I'm actually not surprised. Now, what I wish they would have done in the study, I wish they would have actually been able to measure time spent in REM. Yeah. I think that would have been amazing. True. And also to match up with like, what is the care plan for the patient? So yeah. did this patient have like Q1 hour neuro checks on top of it? Is there yeah. ways to adjust their sleep quality based on our care plan? And I yeah. think that's a long-term thing that we as nurses need to fix. Oh yeah. And I mean, you know, so any of you who were working in the hospital, one of the things you've got to ask yourself is does this patient really need some of these interventions at night? So do we need Q1 hour vitals when the patient's not on any vasopressors or vasodilators or any vasoactive drips. Yeah. Really, do you need Q1 vitals? Right. Or, you know, Q1 we actually just made a change because uh, our heparin dosing was scheduled for 1 a.m. I don't want to come at Why? you at 1 in the morning. So we just moved no. it to a new time frame, which is great. Um, yeah. So now they get it at 5 a.m., which is still really early to wake someone up for heparin. But it made a big change in our suite, in our plan yeah. um, to not have to go wake people up at 1 in the morning. I agree. I totally agree. But I'd be fine with 5 a.m. Yeah. I'm an early bird. Yeah. I so know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, but check out the study. I yeah. think really interesting. And we have really got to do all we can to prevent delirium. This is not a little issue. No. So. And more and more research is coming out. Not talking about how we can prevent it because yes. um, it's not just gonna be one single thing that's gonna fix it oh yeah, yeah. and delirium is complicated I mean by f it's it's almost like a syndrome mm -hmm. it's very very complicated and multifactorial so. delirium syndrome oh I like it I, I, I'm, I'm a businesswoman yeah. so right. I can I can do it yeah let's do it yeah. I'm just joking so anyway but I you know maybe we should right buy yeah. stock in delirium right yeah. No, not delirium. No. Presidex. <laughs> not delirium. Well, now that it's going off market or off Yeah, no, FDA yeah, patents. don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. now's not the time. So, yeah. anyway, okay. Well, anyway, this is a super exciting study, really exciting research. So, I'm Nicole Kovchuk. This is Joel Green. And this is 10 Minute Tidbits.